Now, over in East Africa, Kenya's second largest fuel retailer, Kennel Cobel, says it will focus a lot more on market segmentation, particularly in areas that yield a lot more revenue for the cost involved. The move is part of efforts to maintain and grow its profits in the future. The Pan-African firm bounced back to full year profits in 2013 with a pre-tax profit of $6.5 million, compared to a loss of $102 million in 2012. Now, the recovery came about due to some fairly aggressive restructuring that saw the company retrench 41% of its staff while cutting its debt load and finance costs. Kennel Kobel also operates in several other African countries, including Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, Zambia, Ethiopia, Burundi, Mozambique and Congo. In order to boost sales, it plans to invest more in retail business, LPG output and its non-fuel business as well. Continue to look at our asset portfolio. And where we see assets that are not delivering the expected returns, you know, those assets will be disposed of. Yeah. We'll also continue to grow our business in uh, market segments that have high margins. I have in mind, like, the retail business, that's the core of our business. Uh, we'll also be looking at uh, expanding our LPG, the cake gas offering. Uh, we'll also be looking at the uh, lubricants. Th those are lines that deliver value and add significantly to the bottom line. We are focusing on some countries and uh, increasing. In one of the countries, we almost double the, the number of service stations we have there. And we, in line with that, the, the revenues. And that's what we are doing. This is the expansion. It's more organic uh, growth, not acquisition as you saw us in the past. Uh, first is cheaper and it's faster, and we did a lot in this front, at least in three countries out of the eight. Right then, let's dig into the numbers a little more. David O'Hana is the Group Managing Director of Kennel Cobill. He's live with us in studio tonight. And thank you for your time this evening, sir. Um, given management's intent to reduce the debt load of the company, given the losses that it suffered in 2012, why was a decision made to pay dividends so soon after 2012. Wouldn't the money have been better used perhaps to repair the balance sheet? Yeah. Uh, first, good evening. Uh, we are quite happy to pay dividend this year. Remember, we came from 2012. We had a big loss in 2012. We couldn't afford to pay dividends, so we are happy to be back reporting profits. You know, there is investors and many Kenyans investing in the shares of Kennel Cobbles, so there is expectations from us. Traditionally, all over the years, Kennel uh, Kobil shared dividend with his investors, and that's what we are doing this year. Just to know that uh, this year we uh, gave out of the net profit 26.4% uh, uh, back to the shareholders as dividend. And uh, the way is things moving this year in 2014 for the last four months, or the first quarter if you wish, uh, we see very strong uh, numbers and we believe that uh, 2014 and we hope we share an even bigger dividend. Uh -huh. We are also happy to deal with the, the issue of paying uh, back debt or reducing debt in the company and we are very busy doing so uh, and we'll continue throughout 2014 uh, to restructure our uh, uh, borrowing in the company. Let's, let's talk about the restructuring efforts that you have undertaken. Your forex losses dropped from $4.6 billion in 2012 to $105 million last year. What hedging policies, what did you change rather in your hedging policies to bring about that change? Yeah, first we manage our inventory more carefully uh, in 2013. By managing the inventory, the market, the oil prices uh, were in 2013 in backwardation. Oil prices came down uh, internationally. So we reduced inventory. By reducing invest inventory, we were less exposed to the dollar. And when we started the repayment, uh, which was approved by the board, the repayment program of the uh, debt, uh, we started with the dollars. We cleared most of the unnecessary dollars in our balance sheet. That's what led us to a massive reduction. And we're actually quite uh, pleased uh, with the achievement of 105 for the full year. Over the last five years, I think it's the, not think, I know, it's the best, uh, uh, it's the best uh, results uh, in terms of exchange loss during uh -huh. a year. Indeed. Uh, let's talk about shareholder equity. Your, one of your stated objectives this year is to increase the amount of shareholder equity that you're holding on your balance sheet. How will this be achieved? Is a rights issue on the cards? No, look, rights issue is a complex uh, matter. You know, when you uh, issue new rights, you dilute existing shareholders and not always it will be accepted uh, uh, as a welcome move. What we are doing is the tough uh, and the not easy 
uh, way of doing it. We are uh, disposing assets which are non-performing. Uh, we are uh, cutting costs. And from the profits we generated last year and uh, in this quarter, we are busy paying debt. I think it's a, it's, it's a fair, uh, it's a fair uh, way to the existing uh, shareholders. Indeed, to clarify, Mr. Hanna, what sort of assets are you disposing of and what will Kennel Cobalt's uh, asset structure look like once you're done? Yeah, I can tell you uh, uh, Kennel Cobalt uh, uh, disposing assets, it's, it's one thing that, uh, you know, we are heavily uh, with, with structured uh, assets all over Africa in the eight countries we are operating. So whenever we see an asset that uh, it's not performing as we wished, as we projected, we are disposing it, generating the cash, repaying debt, reducing the financing cost. Remember, the interest rate, the prevailing interest rates in Kenya and in the region, it's quite high. In all countries we are operating is above 12%. So I think it's a, a, is the right move to do. Ah. And remember, Kennel Cobill is a heavily... A, 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 with assets in all the eight countries we are operating. We expanded rapidly in the last few years. Time for us to realize a, a, from the assets that we bought over the years. Indeed. Uh, just hold it over there. We'll be back with David Ohana, the general, uh, the group managing director out of Keno Kobel in just a moment. Specifically, though, let's talk about Kenya's oil hold, specifically data from consulting firm Global Data. It released a report barely 24 hours ago in which its analysts estimate that the oil discovered at just one of Kenya's oil blocks, that's 10 BB, would yield roughly $10 billion in revenue over 30 years. Now, Global Data essentially argues that output from that well alone could account for 0.83% of Kenya's annual GDP growth rate in the next couple of years. The author of that report, John Sissa, argues that a delay by Kenya to issue its first competitive license could work in the country's favor as interest rises among international oil companies and they in turn get more time to prepare their bids. Let's get a bit more analysis now on the status of the oil industry in Kenya. Mr. Hanna, of course, is still with us in studio. Merim Bemard is live with us in London tonight. Uh, Merim, let's start with you. If Kenya's licensing round is pushed back to say the fourth quarter of 2014 will that make the country less competitive relative to uganda mm, well rama you know there's mixed views on that and the new report that you were just talking about suggests that kenya's oil and gas industry could be less attractive in the short term until we see that first round of licensing that you were just mentioning but the report also expects interest will pick up in the long term now, critics argue that others like Mozambique, Uganda and Tanzania are already pushing ahead with discoveries and, you know, time is money. Analysts say in 2012 alone, more than 50 exploration wells were completed in East Africa. Indeed. Now, that's more than half of the traditional oil and gas sites. Indeed, Mr. Ohana, let, given your experience in the oil industry, you're the second largest player in Kenya. What's your assessment of the energy bill that's at the root of this root and branch review of Kenya's oil sector? Yeah, look, as a downstream player and a dominant uh, downstream player in uh, Kenya, I think the, the generally the energy bill is strengthening a lot uh, the regulator, ERC, what we call uh, the Energy Regulatory Commission. It gives them a lot of power uh, going into the future to regulate. Uh, we have many issues in the downstream sector. One a good example is the LPG. There is a lot of illegal refilling. So it gives them power to go and close facilities which are uh, not licensed, uh, put more penalties when issues to come with the quality, when we have mixed uh, kerosene and diesel in uh, petrol stations. So the bill, uh, the penalty can go up to uh, uh, 10 million shillings. So I think it's the right move to regulate the industry uh, more. I, I know that it's giving also some power to uh, the energy regulatory uh, to a committee that they are introducing, uh, the uh, National Fossil uh, Committee, to do with the upstream activities in Kenya, to do with the uh, uh, trading of blocks, uh, exploration, uh, coal, uh, LNG, and so forth. Uh, I think it's, it's, a, it's the right move. There is many mm -hmm. other aspects, but I think the main one is generally empowering ERC. I think uh, me as a Kennel Cobill and as the chairman of the Supply Co, yeah. we are welcoming this uh, uh, move. Well, that's a downstream perspective, Miriam, but uh, the upstream companies are more or less listed in London. What do they think of Kenya's proposed energy bill? 
Absolutely. You know, that there's not much agreement there, of course, with Mr. Ohana. The, you know, analysts are concerned over some of the details and how long it'll actually take to pass the bill. The bill wants to change rules on royalties and separate gas sharing provisions. For now, there's very little details about that. And these, that sort of upfront payments won't be very attractive to oil firms uh, and new investors. It also doesn't help that plans are now stalled to pass the bill by June as the Kenyan government faces some political challenges and of course the report also suggests that even when the energy bill is finalized production sharing terms will probably be part of the bidding criteria for the firms for the oil firms that won't bode well for many companies indeed finally uh, mr ohana your kenya's second largest retailer as we mentioned before but how feasible is it for companies like yours that specialize in downstream activity to move up the value chain is the human and the financial capital needed for that available in kenya yeah, look, it's not uh, something we are wishing to have. It's, there is no plan for that. We don't have the human capacity, the expertise. And uh, I think we should focus on what we are doing best, distribution and retail. Uh, this, this is our main focus, to bring into our service stations the LPG, the lubricants, the fuel, in the right quality, in the right time, in the right price. Uh, uh, down, uh, upstream uh, business exploration, let's leave it to the guys that have the muscles to do so. It required a lot of uh, investment, and we prefer not to lose sight on what we are doing best in the last 55 years. We just had the, the 55th uh, uh, anniversary of the AGM this uh, morning. So I think uh, as the board uh, directive, uh, uh, we'll focus on what we are doing best is the uh, downstream in uh, this part of East, Central, uh, Southern part of uh, Africa. Indeed, we'll have to leave it there for the time being. Thank you very much for your insights tonight. David O'Hanna, Group Managing Director, Kenel Kobel, Baron Bemard, live.